Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 12. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. For the eyes of the Lord are, are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Some people believe that God is a God of love. And some people may say that God is a good God. Those things are true. But what you are missing, God is a God of punishment as well. You see, if you only believe that God is a good God and God is a God of love, if you only believe in those things, you may think to yourself, hey, since God is a God of love, I can continue on disobeying him and he is not going to punish me. God is a God of punishment. When bad things happen to you, some people may blame demons and Satan and so on and so on. When you are disobeying God, he is saying that he is punishing you. What does it mean by the face of the Lord is against them that do evil? This is saying that God is against you when you do evil. I really hope you understand that. God is against you when you do evil. Does Satan attack you? Yes. Does demons attack you? Yes. But when you are disobedient to God, this is saying that God is against you. Even if you go to church 24-7, every Sunday, every Wednesday, so on and so on, if you are not obeying God and going to church, it's not the same thing as obeying God. If you are not obeying God, He is against you. He is punishing you. God has made, God made everything right. So, what do you think is going to happen to you when their creator of all is against you? <laughs> so you wonder why so many bad things are happening to you. You are wondering why... Stay obedient to God. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. So there is an incentive to serve God. He is not going to be against you. He is going to be for you. He is going to listen to your prayers. And his ears are open unto their prayers. Some people believe that when they are in sin, that God is going to hear their prayers. God is not going to consider your prayers. He is only going to consider the prayers of the righteous. According to this, according to what this scripture is saying here, so you have to repent of your sins. So what does righteous mean? Does righteous mean that you have been perfect your whole life? No, it does not mean that. Some people may say that no one is perfect. Here we go again. The earthly definition of perfection means nothing according to the Bible. 
See, when we think of perfection, we think of someone who does nothing wrong or their whole life, everything is good. According to the Bible, being righteous, being perfect, it does not mean that. You are righteous, you are made perfect when you repent of your sins and follow the rules and regulations of the Bible. You are made perfect, you are righteous. Does that make any sense? So, don't ever say that no one is perfect because you don't know what you are saying. Perfection, according to the Bible, does not mean what you are saying. So, according to God, it is possible to be righteous and to be made perfect. Okay. This woman commented to me and she was pretty much saying that because of grace, you don't have to repent of your sins. All you have to do is believe that there is a God and you are saved. That is what she pretty much wrote to me. Back in the Old Testament, what did they have to do to cover their sins? They had to do animal sacrifices. Okay. When Jesus Christ died, we no longer have to do animal sacrifices. All we have to do now is repent when we make mistakes and follow his rules and regulations. That's it. Now, you are saying that because of grace, we can still sin and all we have to do is believe in God. That's it. Okay. Let's say that there is this pedophile. This pedophile believes in God, right? Okay. But this pedophile rapes 20 kids a week. Okay. Now, what you said is that all you have to do is believe that there is a God, right? So, are you telling me? So, all this pedophile have to do is believe that there is a God and this person can continue on raping 20 kids a week and when that person dies and continues doing what this person is doing, when this person dies, are you saying that this person is going to heaven? If you say yes, something is really wrong. If God allows a persistent and consistent pedophile into heaven that is raping 20 kids a week, he has to, he has to allow everyone to go to heaven. Because what is the different, the difference from that pedophile and other pedophiles? What is the difference between a sinner who says that they don't care about God and a sinner who believes in God. What is the difference? Nothing. There is no difference because you are doing the same things as that sinner. So how can you say that you are different when you are doing the same things as what a sinner does? So you say that you only have to believe that there is a God. And grace, when you sin, it just takes away your sin 
and you don't have to live holy. That is satanic. That is demonic. Think about it. A person who rapes 20 kids a week, you are saying that as long as a person believes in God, they don't have to repent and they are saved. So when they die, they get to go to heaven. That is demonic. I am not going to comment to any comment like that because that is overly satanic. That beats the whole purpose of why Jesus Christ came back to earth. Because if we can continue on sinning, what is the point of him dying? So before Jesus Christ died, everyone was in sin. So when Jesus Christ died, he died for us to continue sinning? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. So this once saved, always saved mess is so demonic. There is no point of him teaching us the right way to do things if we can continue on sinning. What is the point of the Bible if we can continue on sinning? Makes no sense. So really take heed to this. God bless.